So I'm finishing up some projects today. We're gonna turn this into a medicinal. You can use it for medicinal purposes. You can use it as dressing. You guys are shaking. And we're doing a little food prep. About these stone containers is when you take them out you turn the oven off our oven cooks like a wood stove it's very different it's awesome but the, these really help because when you take them out they continue to cook and keep, keep things warm so I can put them on the counter and the food continues to cook outside the oven so this one's been out for a while and you can see all that steam still. And these are beautiful cabbages with some herbs. We're gonna be making a really nice dish for dinner. So I'm gonna vent these a little because I don't want them to cook anymore. And we need to feed our sourdough. I find it personally best in my environment to keep two smaller jars going at all times to prevent mold and things. I'm also not great about feeding them as often as I should, so that eliminates a lot of problems. Now I'm gonna make some paneer cheese and I don't have a recipe for this. I've just been making it for years. I used to use goat's milk and I really like it with goat's milk personally. Um, I don't like the taste of cow milk cheese, but I use it for the children and to put into recipes and it just makes an awesome uh, side dish that I can add to meals. So you can Google recipes, there's lots of them out there, but I'll walk you through what I do. So I take the milk, which is a whole milk. I'm not sure. I think if you do this with grocery store milk, you actually make cottage cheese. So definitely look up some instructions. But I warm the milk over medium to low heat. And I'm just trying to get it frothy. So you can see the texture is starting to change. We're getting a little bit of aeration on the top. That is when it's ready. And I turn down the heat or turn it off altogether. And I'm going to add either lemon juice or white vinegar. Um, and what that does is it causes it to start to curdle and the proteins separate from the liquids and we get our cheese. So it's very, very easy. It doesn't take much time. And then I just strain it out. The byproduct, what's left, I believe that's whey, not a super expert on milk products. Um, but I just feed it to the chickens, but I'm sure there's lots of different uses for that if it's something you want to use. And so with this cheese, I just like to strain it, get rid of all the liquid. And then it's best if you have a mold and can shape it, but I don't have a mold. So I just put it in a bowl and then I stick a heavier bowl on top of it. And it presses into a beautiful block of cheese that you can then cut into different shapes. Now we're gonna make a ginger medicinal concoction that I like to have available for the winter. It tastes amazing and is, has so many benefits. It's great for sore throats. Um, if you feel like you're coming down with anything, you can take it as a preventative. And then I also use it as a base in a lot of different recipes. And it's made with ginger, lemon. I like to put thyme in mine, but you can use any herbs that you choose and honey. And so here I'm harvesting some thyme and of course the towers need a little bit of attention. So I'm gonna give this starts a good water. 
I have my starts at the base of my towers right now, and that's what I do when I'm growing outside. Once they get big enough, they go outside and they grow right along the rim of my towers so they can get sunlight. All right, for this recipe, we are going to shred our ginger, peels and all, because there's lots of benefits in the peels of ginger. And because I'm using just a regular grater, it leaves a bunch of nubs or end pieces because, you know, it just gets too hard to get that close. So I put those in the Vitamix and I like to put some zest from the lemon peel and then the juice of a whole lemon. And, and these aren't perfect ratios. You're just going for, I'll show you towards the end, a little bit of liquid when you blend all of those bits of ginger. And that's what the lemon's there for is to just add that juice that we need. So if you're making a larger jar, just add more lemon juice if you need it. I think I actually added a second lemon to this one actually. Um, once that's blended, I'm gonna take it from the Vitamix and stick everything into my jar. And then I add the rest of my thyme. I actually added some thyme to the ginger that I blended just to blend that up and get some of the juice as well. And so once I've got the thyme in there, I'm just gonna top it with honey. And you wanna do this slowly because it can overflow very easily. And then you'll need to take a spoon or something to press into that mixture so the honey can kind of feed its way to the bottom. And you'll just keep topping it off until we have it almost full. All right, so we have juice at the bottom from me using the blender and the lemon. And so I'm just gonna kind of turn this and I'm trying to get the honey to go through everything. And I'm gonna add a little bit more honey and you wanna leave a little head space so you can see I have about an inch because this is going to ferment and it's gonna put off juices. So we're just trying to get it all mixed up. I also put a cheesecloth, uh, a beeswax cloth over this because you don't want the honey to touch the metal. It does weird things. It's almost done putting off water and it's a little bit not put together it's one piece but you can see some edges had i not added so much vinegar or took it out when it was a little bit softer i could have molded it into like a flat cheese or if i had a better mold you can definitely shape these better but i don't need them to be shaped better i just needed it to hold form and you can cut this in cubes popular thing to do is fry them. I don't do that. I'm going to cut it into cubes and just serve it as a side with our di with our dinner. Okay, check it out, friends. Purple cabbage, paneer cheese, a little bit of really good bona fortuna olive oil, some herbs, a little sea salt.